Queen Melbourne. I would say they're, I wouldn't say over the top, but their love for football is, yeah, something else. <laughs> Go, Giles! Go, Giles! Yeah! How tight! On the Friday, the day before the grand final, it was me and Marlon sitting in the truck together. And I had little Levi, Marlon's son, in my lap, and he had his daughter. And the media just swarmed us and wanted to talk to Marlon. You're a big game player, aren't you? Some people say that. And we loved it. It was surreal. It was just unbelievable. Marlon Pickett is embracing the hype ahead of making his debut in front of 100,000 people. It was just a feel-good story of the 2009 AFL Grand Final. And that was before we knew that he was going to play the sort of game that he played. Marlon Pickett, first game, that would send goosebumps down his spine. I just knew he belonged out there and it was his day and it was all Marlon, Marlon, Marlon. Handball to the advantage. Here's Pickett. That was a beautiful move. Oh, what about that? I was so proud of this bloke, and because I got to know him and his background and what he's been through. Pickett, look at the boys get around here. The first game. People make mistakes in life, and you can change and turn your life around. Life's all about getting second chances and becoming a better person. If he kicks this, this will be one of the great wars in grand final history. Marlon's having a shot at goal, and the murmur that is going around. This is like a fairy tale. This couldn't happen, could it? We couldn't have a kid that's been in jail, 27 years of age, playing his first game in front of 100,000. He could not possibly kick a goal. It's an incredible story. Hard to believe it happened, really. A debutante about to put the dagger in the heart on grand final day. I've always been a good runner. Every score I went to, when there was a competition, if I didn't come first, then it made me push even harder the next year. It's beautiful watching him run. There is no sound, it is so quick, and it's not just straight, it's any direction, blind turns. He's, he's nearly like a ballet dancer, the way he moves. And the Tigers land a, land a counter punch. Pickett tried to spin through. When people watch Marlon playing football, that's all they see, not behind closed doors. A lot going on with our family and, yeah, there's, yeah, quite a lot of struggles and, yeah. Being brought up in Perth, Perth is hard growing up. A lot of people go out looking for trouble. I can remember when I was 15. Yeah, thought I was big enough to head out with the older brothers. Well, got in trouble. Um, the brothers got in trouble. Got into fighting on straight that. Yeah, got charged for grief body harms. A couple months after I got released from juvenile detention centre, then I met Jess. Jess was the first girl that I met properly. And yeah, no, I just, I don't know, it's just a strong connection from probably when I first met her. He was a very sharp person. Also, myself was very sharp. I think he was more into me than what I was into him, but I think that's what um, brought me to, yeah, liking Marlon, yeah. He wasn't that much into football at the time. He was more in trouble. Jessica was 15 years of age. She ran away. She found a boyfriend, and it's Marlon. Me, my mum and sister went to get her and she came back with us. A few days later, she's gone missing again. Ah! 
Our parents went through a bit of stuff, you know, trying to control all of us kids in the city. It was a bit hard for them. So they moved up, they decided to move to York to keep us all out of trouble. My mum made it hard with Jess to try and accept it, but um, I wasn't taking out that. She had no choice. It was either Jess come with us or, or me and Jess head our own way. At that time, I didn't want to acknowledge Marlon <laughs> because I was, I was um, upset with them both. I thought that was making all the wrong decisions. <laughs> I was 17 when I first found out I was pregnant. It was kind of a shock to me, um, just because how young I was. And um, that changed everything. I had to support them. Then I tried to look for work, but work didn't end up finding me, so I had to find another way to support them. Yeah, I was 18 at the time, so just partying, drinking with drugs, and ended up getting into crime. Well, at the time, I was thinking, if I break into a shop, it'll be safer for the family. Then, yeah, then sell drugs from home with the kids in it. I knew Marlon was doing um, robberies and whatnot, but um, no, I didn't feel that all right with it because of um, I knew it would come to end one day. I was laying in bed with Jess one morning, and I heard a knock on the door. When I looked at the door, and who was standing at the police. Two weeks after Marlon was arrested, I found out I was pregnant for our second child, Latrell, and I knew from there that things were going to be really difficult for myself. to visit Marlon with the children. It was good for the hour, but after it was time to say goodbye, it was pretty hard. Just seeing my son cry for, for his dad. Yeah, oh, a tear rolled down my side of my face. Um, yes, yeah, so I looked back once and that was about it. Just kept walking. A few days down the track, he said not to visit him as often only because he didn't want uh, Junior to hurt as much. And yeah, just probably the hardest thing I had to do. Sometimes I just asked Jess, why didn't she leave me? But then she said um, she didn't want to kids to grow up without the father. Because I've seen my mother, my father, um, my brother, being in and out of prison most of life. In 2011, Wooroloo Prison Farm joined forces with a local football club over in Western Australia, taking prisoners outside of prison walls to play in the local football league. It's up to you at the end of the day. I, I, like I said, I don't like to lose. You've got to use your teammate. Don't try take on the world. I was approached to come on board and document the program for the ABC. It was a bit more conviction. Speaking to Marlon, interviewing him, I didn't think that there was too much to this young man. He was very quiet. He was very humble. He didn't really have a lot to say. Uh, love my football. Uh, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, You're good at it. Yeah. Oh. All right. But once we got outside of prison walls, once we saw them running around on the field, he was incredible. I mean, he really let his skills do the talking. Watching Marlon play football was pretty surprising because I didn't really know how um, talented he was. And everyone on the team was adamant that he was absolutely going to be uh, an incredible AFL star on the outside once he'd completed his sentence. 
I don't really have no idea about where my footy career would lead me at the time. I was probably just worried about focusing on getting through my sentence or what I had to do. I think the first game they beat their first team by like 150 points. It was absolutely ridiculous. As the season progressed, you could definitely see that these guys were on a fast track to reaching the finals and potentially a grand final victory. Uh, unfortunately, there was uh, one particular incident that threw a real big spanner in the works. Pick up, Bale! Yeah, at the time I had enough of minimum security, there wasn't the right structure around me, I had two months left. There's a bit too much freedom where I didn't want freedom. I just wanted more structure where time flew instead of dragging along. So I asked to get moved from Waterloo, but that didn't happen. So then the only way I had to move if I got charged. In prison, you always can get drugs, doesn't matter where you are. In Waterloo, you can get stuff just chucked straight over the fence. If they catch you, you head them back to Acacia Prison, slight and medium security. So at that time, you yeah, just talk to the right people and I end up getting some marijuana. I was caught out of bounds. Yeah, from that point, I knew I was going back to Acacia Prison. Very different routines there. We're talking about much stricter rules and regulations, a lot less freedoms, concrete walls, barbed wire, all of that sort of stuff. That was the real reason why it was such a shock. He was the one that had the most to lose. I mean, he was absolutely um, dominating in the competition. He was dominating as a player. And as a result, they lost in the finals and they fell out of the comp. One, two, three, four. I had doubts for Marlon if he was to change or not, but when he got out in 2013, the first week he went into South Fremantle Football Club and asked if he was allowed to play with him. Marlon would have been around about 21. He'd asked some questions of us as a football club when we were prepared to take a player straight out of prison. There's always a little bit of fear that comes with that. So a lot of people would get out of the way when Marlon was going towards the ball. You want food? You want some lunch? In 2015, myself and Marlon moved into our very first home just outside of Fremantle, where we had our first daughter, Shaniqua. That's your one. Levi's. Who sit down there? The following year, we had our youngest son, Levi. You can watch that play football? Yeah. You like a headache. You a headache, do you? Since Marlon was younger, he told me that that was his dream to become an AFL player and play for the big league. The pinnacle of Australian football is the AFL. It's the big stage. But in the way that the AFL and indeed most sports, their drafting system work, you get picked up when you're 18 or 19. So at 24, he's almost ancient. For the Richmond Football Club, we were still trying to build our team. We certainly assessed him and looked at him closely. But we probably weren't quite ready for Marlon at that point in time. He's got to be able to survive. And not just survive, he's got to thrive in our environment and prosper. Richmond captain Trent Cotchin has defended coach Damien Hardwick after another embarrassing loss at the weekend. 2016 was one of the toughest years I've ever had, emotionally, physically. And it just became a really, really crappy place to be, the Richmond Footy Club. Kicking their lowest score for more than 50 years. There's no way I'm bringing in a player that's been incarcerated for a period of time 
You know, I became a, a shocking coach. I became, I thought, well, I became unapproachable to my playing group. A WA Indigenous boy that has experienced what he has done, I would have just thought, this is all too hard. There's no way this is going to work. I met with several different clubs, West Coast, Fremantle, Gold Coast, Essendon, it was St Kilda, but I got overlooked every year. Probably just, I don't know, made me more angrier that they're still running about in my past. Well, one night we went out, then there's, I don't know who the other fellow was, but um, I think he called me nigger or boom or something like that. I'm going to take a swing at me. So then I step back and just hit him. So then I was going to court for that, but at the end of it, he got dismissed and dropped. <laughs> That's where I just stopped going out. And oh, so now it's just focusing on my kids, my partner, and doing the best I can for them. We you put your foot in here and bury your foot. Marlon had doubts that he would ever make the AFL side, but um, I encourage him a lot to just stick to it. Oh, pick fly by Pickett. Highly rated AFL clubs watching his finals campaign as well. Knocks into a dangerous position. Pickett on the goal line almost. It's three straight goals for South Fremantle. His football in 2018 was phenomenal. He went on to win our best and fairest. He had developed great leadership. He was not only a leader of the Aboriginal players at our football club, he was a leader of everybody. If you played alongside Marlon Pickett, you know, we, we felt our players walked a little bit taller. Pickett, oh, wow. what a mark! Extraordinary! Well, any talent scouts watching? He's always had the aerial power. He's always been so brave in the air. We interviewed him a couple of times. Uh, and from that, the interest grew. So pause it now. Everybody knows what's behind him. Mm. The only fears we probably had in maybe selecting Marlon was we're taking a 27-year-old guy with um, a partner and four young children and relocating them from one side of the country to the other. Such an unselfish player too. That brings other people into the game. Sometimes you learn the, you know, the greatest lessons of your life in your darkest times. It certainly happened to me. It might have happened to Marlon as well. 37 years of disappointment purged with a deafening roar. The Tigers have got home for the first time in 37 years. By now, Damien Hardwick had completely changed the way he went about things. Now we're back! He embraced people from all sorts of different backgrounds, including troubled ones. And that's the significant change. We don't all have to fit in the same box. We can let people be who they are. We can embrace them for the person that they are. And then, for the first time in decades, the AFL decides to have a mid-season draft. But the week before that mid-season draft, Marlon Pickett breaks his finger for a second time. What have you gone for at pick 13 for the Tigers? Yeah, we've selected Marlon Pickett from the South Fremantle Football Club. Well, surprised here. He was uh, broken his finger on the weekend, Matt. We think six, eight, ten weeks, potentially. Yeah, I don't think there's any concerns from us about the finger being a long-term selection. We think it's uh, an opportunity to get Marlon in now. I was cooking dinner at home. The draft pick was on. We were surprised that they called his name. Yeah, he was shocked. I was surprised. I actually ran out of the house and started shouting. He was just quiet, um, yeah, scratching his head. Walk around the house, didn't know what to do. Footy fans love a good redemption story and this father of four is one of the best. I just let him do what he had to do until he found a house for us in Melbourne. Marlon was in rehab about the time. He couldn't really play because of his finger. And as soon as he started training full time with us and he was in the main training with us, then he just started to tear it up. Pickett's on the verge of being picked in Richmond's VFL team. That's the second tier competition. And then all of a sudden, he's needed back home in Perth. It was late on a Friday. 
I got a phone call from Marlon. He told me, unfortunately, that Jess's brother had passed away. Marlon was clearly quite upset. When I first got locked up, Sam was already in the prison, waiting for me to move in his cell. Yeah, so he already had that organised and whatnot. Then, yeah, we just, I think, as years went by, we got closer. The day after my brother Sam's funeral, myself, my second youngest sister, Hannah, my four children, um, and Marlon moved to Melbourne, the official move. Hey, come here. Me and you gonna wash your hands. Let's go. Uh, yeah, no more taxes for you. I think you had enough. Just, she's a strong person, like, it's hard to see what's going on in her because she just takes it in and goes on with life like she doesn't fuss about it. Me, Marlon, Le no, Levi, Shaniqua, camps in this room. Sometimes it's a bit, a bit much with the wife, both the children. When September rolls around, we were lucky enough as a club to have sides in both finals competitions. Um, and Marlon was playing VFL at the time. What happens though, is Marlon Pickett has such a performance in the VFL, he wins the Norm Goss medal as best on ground. He was nothing short of outstanding. Would he be able to force his way in to the AFL Grand Final side and to become the first player since 1952 to make his debut in the biggest game of all? I think the hype just started to be on the, and the locker room conversation started to happen. Just the name that kept cropping up. I was like, well, what about Marlon? Why, why not Marlon? So, for example, then that other defender comes down, right. he pulls back off the mark. Yes. Marlon can then roll forward to create a 2v1 yeah. further. Like... Thursday comes around and we thought, well, listen, this kid's crossed every bridge we've asked him to cross. His life has challenged him in, in many ways that, that none of us would have any idea of what he's been through. And he's just taken everything in his stride. So we brought him in with uh, the captain, Trent Cochin and Dustin Martin, who he'd, he'd had a bit of a relationship with as well, and we told him he was going to play. The fact of the matter is, we put you in the 22. <laughs> you going to play your first game, brother? Not a bad game. Congratulations. <laughs> he was pretty shocked. He took a big, deep breath, and um, yeah, it was a really special moment, and I'm um, glad I was a part of it. So come the big day, Marlon Pickett, understandably, starts on the bench. But from when he got on the field, he shone from the outset. Solo to Pickett. Whoa, what about that? A full 360 in slow motion. Just down your ass. Everyone was like cheering. And myself and his manager and my cousin were more or less like, oh, finally, like, there he is, you know? Yeah, that's the Marlon we know. This man is playing a great game, pick it as well. In the third quarter, it was 60 to 12 when I kicked the ball to Dusty Martin. Pick it, pick it, take it down. You have been superb. And um, I was kind of walking back and I just happened to look in board and I seen him out the corner of my eye and I kind of just gave him a little nod and um, just kicked it to him. They give it off here and there, guess who? Gave it to the man that set it up for him. At that point, I was thinking, I'm not miss missing this. My first shot of goal. If he kicks this, this will be one of the great wars in grand final history. A debutant. So Marlon's coming at me. The goals are directly over the top of me, so I'm sort of right in the middle of the goal. And he kicks it, and you just know this thing is sailing through. So I'm watching it go over my head like that. And I think everyone's just started charging in. All of us were so proud, uh, so emotional. Um, it was put us, it was to put us um, the biggest lead that I think we've been all day. 
The Tigers are premiers for the 12th time in their history. Some people say what happened to me is a fairy tale, but I was, if, if, if you're looking for a change and a better life, then it's up to you if you want to change it. Here for a visit. Yeah, here for a visit. Have your names, please. Anthony Van der Whelan. Yep. Um, and Marlon Pickett. If I didn't go to prison when I did, I probably wouldn't have learnt. Yeah, was wrong and was right. How does it feel to be back out here? Not liking it, coming back, but yeah. yeah. No, it's not a nice place to be away from your family. Yeah. When my footy career's over, I would like to mentor Indigenous yeah. kids, doesn't matter what kind of Let's kids they are. Lockdown. Just try to show them there is a better life than jail. Yeah, just try to help them get by and to know that I'm always there if they need me. So when you, when you are, just don't give them no reason to try to do that stuff, you know? Yeah. There are a lot of indigenous families out there where yeah. a lot of family are in and out of prison yeah. for their yeah. lifetime. It's not just my family, it's a lot of indigenous people. Stay out of trouble, do everything you can, you know? Yeah. To give yourself the best opportunity to get picked up on that. Yeah, if I had someone I looked up to and come in and visit me when I was in here. Uh, things might have been different. Yeah, they could have helped me to get somewhere I wanted to be a bit earlier. Yeah, and probably, what knows, be there for me. Yeah, it's probably just got to balloon from your mistakes and try something different. It's been, uh, been fantastic having you come in again. Yeah. It's been great to see you again. We'd be happy to have Marlon involved in, in any capacity. The relationship is there and we're happy to sort of continue to foster it um, and, and make it become as productive as possible. It was never easy for Jess, but she's been the rock to my footy so far and supporting me, so over the Christmas break we'll head back so she can enjoy with her family. I couldn't imagine my life without Marlon. Just, yeah, I would say the backbone. I wouldn't have thought that they would have come this far. But, yeah, really happy and proud of them. It's my birthday today. I'm 28. They say it's prom time. Yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling fit. The pressure's huge now. But for those of us that know Marlon Pickett, he eats pressure for breakfast. He strives and thrives uh, on that kind of pressure. There could be an argument to say that he's a bit of a one-game wonder, potentially. Who knows? I think his team loves him. I think the supporters love him. Uh, the game loves him. It's just up to him, really, to see where he goes to from here. So. I don't have any expectations. I'm just really keen to see what happens next.